Hey folks, here I am in talking head mode for a moment. Um, this is a video response to Healthy Prepper's YouTube video called Prepper Survivalists Lone Wolf vs. Group Survival Approach After SHTF Raw Pros and Cons. Uh, this is a much debated topic in the Prepper community. First of all, kudos to Healthy Prepper for putting this video together and doing an excellent job of presenting the advantages and disadvantages of each approach. If you haven't seen Healthy Prepper's video yet, I'm putting the link right below this. Please take a moment to, to take a look at her video as she raises some excellent points that I'd like to respond to. I'll be right here when you get back. So in a raw or rule without rule of law situation, are you better off as a lone wolf prepper, a member of a prepper group, and are these the only two options for preppers? Both the lone wolf prepper and the prepper group approaches are reactive. In other words, it's a foregone conclusion that a raw will occur, and preppers in these two categories are thinking about how they could react to a raw. But are these the only two options? The answer is no. There is a third approach which is proactive and has none of the disadvantages of the others. In a sentence, don't let raw happen to begin with. In this video response, I explain this approach and that there really are three options for preppers. But first, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Without rule of law or raw, as preppers like to call it, means the same thing as the word anarchy. The term anarchy refers to a society without a publicly enforced government. Merriam-Webster defines anarchy as a situation of confusion and wild behavior in which people in a country, group, or organization, etc. are not controlled by rules of law. Um, absence of government, a state of lawlessness or political disorder due to the absence of government authority. Um, I kind of like this one, a utopian society of individuals who enjoy complete freedom without government. Well, uh, good luck with that. Um, an absence or denial of any authority or established order. So basically what we're talking about here is an absence of government or a government breakdown. So what causes a raw or an anarchy is not the actual SHTF event, such as the grid being taken down, Rather, what causes RAW is the government becoming ineffective. We've never had a national scale catastrophe in the United States. The federal and state governments are unprepared. Without electricity, for example, um, let's take a grid down scenario, food production and food delivery stops. Without electricity, city water and well pumps stop. Sanitation and sewer systems stop. Fuel and transportation stops. Medical supplies and services stop. And most people lose heat and light. The federal and state governments are completely unprepared for this. There are over 35,000 cities and towns in the United States. Each one would be looking for outside resources and assistance the federal and state governments would be overwhelmed. The emergency management system, which depends on the ability to call in for outside resources, would fail. When state and local governments can't provide food, water, and security, they will quickly become ineffective. Anarchy or raw will result when desperate people resort to any means necessary to survive, and an ineffective government will not be able to maintain order we will experience societal collapse. In that type of situation, survival is going to be a local issue. The cavalry will not be coming. There is no way FEMA is going to helicopter in MREs to 35,000 cities and towns in the United States. It's just not going to happen. Everybody is going to be on their own. So now let's go back and take a look. So we've got the lone wolf approach and the group survival approach, both of which um, Healthy Prepper went over the pros and cons of that. But we've got this third approach, which is to avoid a raw to begin with. There's another word for that, um, which is community prepping. So rather than lone wolf prepping or group small group prepping, 
This would be community prepping. This is the third approach. Now, a prepared community, and let, let's take, for example, a, a suburban or rural town, the prepared community has these advantages. Number one, it has an effective government. It does not have a role. So the rest of the country could have gone to hell in a handbasket, but as long as this town's government can remain effective, there, there is no role in this town. Um, it has the advantage of collective security. Um, a prepared community would have uh, prepared resources and also all the necessary skills needed that we as individuals or in small groups might not have. The disadvantage of um, community prepping is the community must be prepared ahead of time. But really, isn't that what prepping is all about? So as preppers, for example, we know, you know, one problem we're going to have is there isn't going to be food and there isn't going to be water. So we prepare for that ahead of time. It would be the same with community prepping. The community would um, war game what would happen if the grid went down long term, what they would need to do in order to uh, you know, provide services and security uh, for the community. Now who says that community prepping is a good idea? Well, a bipartisan group in Congress thought it was a great idea and they introduced a resolution, House Resolution 762 on August 2nd, 2012. And this particular resolution encouraged community-based civil defense organizations. Um, now, I, I want to point out that um, what you're looking at right here are two Democrats and two Republicans, both of whom are, uh, or you know, all four of whom, uh, both sides of the aisle, uh, believe that uh, the, the grid is in jeopardy, that uh, it is entirely possible that a grid down event long term could occur and that communities need to prepare for this. So Congress themselves thought that community prepping was a good idea. And specifically, what they proposed was that every community develop its own civil defense program, you know, working with all of the elements of the community in order to meet the needs of the community in times of peace and tranquility, as well as during um, the absence of government assistance for extended periods of time, which is exactly what would occur in a national catastrophe. Uh, neither the federal government nor the states are prepared to um, support 35,000 towns and cities in the United States. And Congress understood this and, um, you know, wants communities to be prepared to um, handle a um, worst case scenario in the absence of um, assistance of either the federal or state government for a long period of time. Um, they also would encourage the communities to uh, become more self-reliant, uh, to be able to generate at least some of their own power and food in order to um, be able to sustain themselves in a, uh, a, a long-term uh, grid-down scenario. So in essence, um, in addition to the two um, kind of approaches that uh, Healthy Prepper spoke about in her video, um, I believe there's a third approach that preppers need to consider, which is community prepping. And, um, you know, another word for community prepping is civil defense, as Congress said. Now, just, just a note on that House resolution. Unfortunately, um, as with much less legislation in Congress over the last couple of years, uh, that resolution died in committee. It never even saw the floor for a vote. But a good idea does not need to pass Congress to be a good idea. So when you look at really the disadvantages of the lone wolf approach and um, also the disadvantages of the group survival approach, what you find is if you could create an environment through a prepared community where you didn't have a role, then uh, that gives everybody in that community an increased chance of survival. And um, really even, you know, the I, I think most importantly or most uh, illustrative here is the security situation. You know, in a, you know, a lone wolf, you know, I'm sorry, but when 20 people armed come up your driveway looking for your stuff, there's only so much you can do. I don't care how good you are. Even the U.S. Navy SEALs back out of a fight if they have to. So 
Um, you know, being a lone wolf prepper is really only going to work for some people who are in a situation where they could completely avoid contact with, with everybody else for a long period of time. Um, but for most people, it's just not going to work because most people just don't live in a situation where that, they're that secluded where that would work. Um, you know, the group survival um, also has a lot of disadvantages with he which Healthy Prepper uh, went over. Um, governance being a big one, that, that's a real tough nut to crack where, um, you know, the leaders of the group may or may not do the right things and the non-leaders of the group may or not, may not agree with what the leaders are doing. Um, in a community prep situation, you have a government, you have your, your town government, and if you don't like the mayor, you vote him out in the next election. I mean, basically, that's the way democracy works. So, um, really, I think that the third approach merits a lot of thought uh, by preppers, and I wanted to throw this video up here um, to basically posit the idea to everybody that uh, community prepping may be something that we've all been missing. Thank you very much for watching.